hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel in today's video i'm going to share part two of the legal process of buying land in kenya i've, I've already shared part one so if you haven't checked it out you can go and check it out i'll also link it in the description box so let me start by introducing myself i'm ruth tanui the founder and managing partner of tanui and company advocates so in step two step i've already shared step one to step five so step six so after all the five steps I've already checked out, which as I shared, many people skip those those steps because you find most people, they go straight to drafting the sale agreement. But ensure that you have, you have followed all the five steps that I've set out because they are very important. It's more of doing your due diligence to ensure that the land you're buying is exactly what you're looking for. Step six is drafting the sale agreement. This is now where the buyer and the seller get down to writing down now. The, what will govern it's basically what will govern you through the land transaction so it's mostly done by an advocate though some people prefer to do it themselves but i would advise getting an advocate because the advocate will ensure all your interests are protected you can either get a joint advocate for both the buyer and the seller or each the buyer and the seller can each get their own advocate this, this step is very important because in case one party doesn't honor the, their part during this land transaction this sale agreement is going to protect you legally because even if you have to go to court the court will be guided by your sale agreement so i, I hope you get how why i insist it's safer when it's a, an advocate who has drafted the sale agreement because at least they'll ensure all your you are protected legally step seven is getting the land control board clearance the lcb consent is normally it's normally it's normally comprises the board the board comprises of county commissioners and the elders living in the area where the land is located. The main purpose is normally just to ensure there is no illegality and there has been transparency in transferring the land. And it, it's mandatory when it comes to transferring land. And the board, those board meetings sit every month, but it differs from various land registries. So you... you so when men normally advise my clients when you've already started the process especially the the one who is buying ensure that at least because they sit monthly so at least ensure that you've already known when the board the board is going to sit though sometimes if there's urgency there's need of urgency you can get you can have a special board meeting which is more expensive because the normal board is normally a thousand kenya shillings but the special board normally costs around ten thousand to fifteen thousand depending on the land step eight is now doing the land valuation. After you've gotten the green light from the land control board, you now go ahead to do the valuation, which is normally done at the land registry where the land is located. The land value is going to do the valuation of the land, which is very important for the purposes of paying of stamp duty. After the valuation of the land has been done, you now have to pay stamp duty. Stamp duty is normally paid. If it's your land is within the municipality, it's 4%. If it's outside the municipality, it's 2%. Then after after now the land valuation the next step is now trans step nine step nine is now doing the transfer of the land which is basically now you you do you book for registration of the transfer for the transfer to be undertaken the process normally it, it determines the land registry it can take a week or two depending on where the land is located but in especially with outside nairobi i normally see the transfer process won't take Step ten. Step, na, step 10 is not the final step. Now at this time after the transfer has been done, a new land title will come with the name of with, with the name of the buyer. But I normally advise my clients just make sure you do a post a postal search after everything has been done just to confirm the land has actually been tra transferred to you. Yeah, the title might be reading your name, but at the land it's maybe the transfer hasn't been done, and that's where every that's the key thing. So that's why you find in some situations. I, I know maybe some of you have had situations where you find the land wasn't actually transferred to your name. So ensure that you do the, the search immediately after you get the title, do the search just to confirm the land as actually, you're now the owner of that, you're the actual owner of that land. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these steps have been helpful. If you have any question, please leave it at the comment section. And if you want maybe to do, if you want any further clarification, you can go to our website, which is here on the screen. There's a there's a form a quick a form that you can fill in for free consultation. Please don't forget to subscribe and like and share it with your friends. Every Friday I share legal issues, so don't forget to check it out.